we are back, and now we are going to get a little bit more quantitative, but still a little bit qualitative in terms of how we're going to determine the critical micelle concentration. So um, let's focus on some differences, or actually some similarities too, on the systems that we're dealing with, and then the initial and final states of our system. So we are going to have, just like we had previously for our microphase separation, we have a diblock copolymer with A block, degree of polymerization NA, B block, degree of polymerization NB. Total degree of polymerization is going to be NA plus NB, although we're going to have to account for um, the homopolymer as well, but we'll come back to that a little bit later. And for this example, we're going to assume a 50 50 die block. So just like what we've been dealing with previously. And we're going to have some chi AB that's greater than zero and, uh, and positive, as we can see here. And we're going to have a uh, homopolymer with some degree of polymerization uh, equal to N. Uh, we'll see that in just a second. And there's going to be chi AA. Be equal to zero. So what are the final states? And these are just some definitions. We'll get to more of that in a bit. So what are the initial and final states of our system? Well, initially we had this just disordered mixture, copolymer and homopolymer. That's just from Flory Huggins theory. Same way we did with the dye blocks and microphase separation. But our final state is going to be our micelle. So at some critical micelle concentration, some certain dye block volume fraction, we are going to spontaneously form and self-assemble some uh, micelle with a core radius RC, as composed of B-type blocks, if we have A-type homopolymer, and a corona with a radius LC composed of A blocks. Um, again, if your homopolymer is of type A. So the one thing that we need to kind of think about is in these two, two systems, the total number of molecules is not fixed. Um, and this is because the micelle is not, um, is not gonna occupy all of the block of polymer in the solution in order to reach equilibrium. So the R condition for equilibrium is gonna be that because you know, the, uh, there's going to be multiple micelles uh, kind of happening here. So once you hit that critical micelle concentration, so it's not just one micelle with everything. I mean, at the critical micelle concentration, you start to kind of self-assemble and form micelles. But anyways, the key condition for equilibrium is our chemical potential of dye blocks in the disordered and micelle state must be equal. So unlike last time when we had that nice uh, kind of, we could just look at the delta G, uh, and we just looked at the initial state and final state. Here, we're gonna have to kind of think about the chemical potentials. So we need our chemical potential of our dye blocks in the ordered state, or BCP. The ordered state must be equal to the chemical potential in the disordered state for our block of polymers. So effectively, what we're saying is that the change in free energy, so our chemical potential, which we know is DGDN, the chemical potential or the change in free energy for moving a single dye block from the micelle to the disordered solution must be equal to zero. So um, we need to calculate the chemical potential of the micelle in the ordered state and disordered state, set them equal to one another. But um, we can make some simplification uh, and we're going to set the chemical potential equal to the change in free energy. So instead of this kind of partial derivative, we're going to approximate it as the change in free energy as we change, uh, basically, as we change or we move one single uh, dye block. So we're going to look at the change in free energy per dye block. So we're going to rewrite all our free energy uh, terms from Flory Huggins and from the, um, basically delta S of you know stretching. We're going to rewrite it all in terms of energy per dye block. That's going to be the kind of the key expression moving forward. So we need always, always energy per dye block. That's it. So next time we're going to actually get into uh, calculating all our free energies for the disordered state of our dye block solute and our homopolymer solvent. So I'll see you all next time. Thanks. Bye.